Paranormal Punches is part of the Podbelly Network. Go to podbelly.com for more great podcasts. Hey, y'all. This is Frank the Bigfoot, and you're listening to the Paranormal Punchers. Hey, friends. Welcome to a special episode of Paranormal Punchers. I'm Mark. I'm Alicia. And we have a very special guest with us. Uh, you may know him from the cult hit movie, The Room. He wrote the book, The Disaster Artist. And now he's working on an alien movie, a UFO abduction movie set in Roswell called Forbidden Sky. Greg Sestero, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I was excited to see you were working on the... Uh, uh, I saw your Kickstarter, an alien movie, and I'm so excited to hear all about this. Yeah, I so I um, obviously for people that don't know, I, I was in a movie 20 years ago called The Room that's become like a cult, a cult movie around the world. It's known as the greatest bad movie ever made. Um, and it, it's if you get a chance to see it with an audience, you got to you got to give it a shot. There's flying spoons. It's it's crazy. And then I wrote a book called The Disaster Artist about my experience, which became a, a good film. Um, that uh, came out in 2018 that won a Golden Globe. And then I love horror movies. I love paranormal. I love UFOs. So I I decided I was going to go out and start writing and producing my own movies. And I made a a cult horror movie called Miracle Valley, which is based on a real-life cult in the Arizona desert that traffics people based on their blood type. So Miracle Valley is a true story. It was released um, last year. And then during that time, during the pandemic, I was living in the Arizona desert where there's been a lot of UFO activity, a lot of so-called abductions. There's one of my favorite movies called Fire in the Sky, in which took place in um, Snowflake, Arizona. So I went up to Sedona and I took a, a night tour. It's called UFO Night Tour. You go out with night vision goggles and there's this, they break down the sky because there's in that vortex, there's so much UFO activity. And during that time, I just got this idea Um to make this movie, which um, it's sort of, it, it's, a, it's a really crazy story because it's about a small town radio host who um, lives in a, in a trailer in Roswell, New Mexico, and he hosts this conspiracy late night show like, like an art bell. But this guy is, is so out there because um, he used to be an actor and he was in a really bad sci-fi TV show. Um, that got canceled quickly, but to him, he thought the show really meant something. And it was telling people what's coming in the future. He's like, people just don't get it. So he never let go of his character that he played on the show. He really thought that was his calling. So he's kept that character alive. He's alienated his family. His you know daughter doesn't want to speak to him. And he's hosting the show, which has no callers. But late one night, he's doing, he, he's, he set up this antenna that he thinks is going to reach other planets. And that night he gets a call from an alien race that's trying to reach Earth and they only want to speak to him. So now all of a sudden this reality is he is now an important figure and he's got to like take on this challenge. So it's sort of a – the movie is – it's shared language. is sort of a, a galaxy quest, fire in the sky, ex machina, um, sort of like, I don't know, tying in that 80s Amblin vibe, practical effects, really telling a story that, that would be fun to get people to go back to the theater – and watch it you know there's comedy there's horror there's a little bit of everything but i really draw from personal inspiration from traveling and weird experiences and the whole ufo thing just came to me while i was literally looking into it during the pandemic yeah that's awesome uh, so you wrote it and are you going to direct it yeah and then we're looking at you know it's kind of open right now we're, we're seeing what options we have and we just want to make the most fun fun movie we can so We'll see how that comes together. I know we were, we're looking for, for some cool cameos like um, there's an actor named Neil Breen, which is uh, pretty far out. Uh, so our list of cameos is, is pretty wild, but um, it just depends how we how we do. Um, now, you uh, your Kickstarter is uh, live. Um, I think you already got like 100 and, 150 backers. That uh, updated just while we were hanging out here. And uh, you got some really unique um, tiers. That uh, people can get. I mean, and you really leaning into the room. You got, I think it looks like you got some Lego action figures. 
Well, there, uh, the, yeah, the disasters of the book and the disaster artists, there's alternate storylines. And so we kind of are celebrating the room's 20 year anniversary. So we have these really cool, like vampire flying cars. Um, I also, when I was 12, I wrote a script called home alone, lost in Disney world. That was a sequel that I pitched to John Hughes. <laughs> I found the script and that's one of the rewards as well. Um, and, uh, I love physical media. I love like holding a Blu-ray and t-shirts. So we have, a, we're going to create a Blu-ray and a vinyl and all that stuff for, ufo lovers and, and all that and we have a really great um composer his name's dan platzman from imagine dragons who's going to do the, the the music as well uh so it's really um it's just a chance to involve fans i want to give a chance for people to be on set who be part of zoom calls and production see how a movie gets made i mean they're they've supported us for 20 years now with the room and the disaster artist um so it's really sort of a celebration of indie film and and I can't, I mean, I've been scouting White Sands, New Mexico and El Paso, Texas and all these great places. And just the the shooting locations are so inspiring and so much fun that I can't wait to to bring the story to life. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, back it. As a, as a short filmmaker, uh, I was excited again to see this, but I want to participate in the Kickstarter just so I could see some behind the scenes and, you know, get inspired, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, so uh, you know what this all this whole journey started twenty years ago. Um, I had been in a few few movies, and my friend Tommy had his dream was to be a an actor director, and he no nobody was casting, nobody was saying, "Hey, we see something in you." So he decided he was going to make his own movie, and he's like, "You got to be in it." And um, it's a, it's just a crazy story. It's the power of having an idea and falling through on it. I think so many times we have this goal or this these thoughts, and we think, "Ah, you know, who's going to want to see this, or where's it going to go?" And the room was a great example of that. It really had no chance to succeed. I mean, if you really look at it back in that time, and here we are, twenty years later, it's selling out movie theaters around the world. I was, I've been all over the world at this point, especially this year, and people love this movie. And I, it just teaches me, like, hey, the creative spirit and is so important. And when you have a passion for something, the journey is the most fun part. You know, we make a movie, we have no idea what's going to turn out, but there's no thrill like making a film with a band of brothers and people who who are creative as well and it's really the time of your life and then and i think if you have a story you want to tell get out there and make it you don't know what's going to come of it but it's a great feeling to to accomplish a goal i was i usually ask uh, our guest uh, any any words of advice or inspiration but you just did it uh mm -hmm. so that's awesome uh yeah and uh speaking of you traveling around uh with the show in the movie uh the room doing a Q and a, uh, you did, I mean, you got a up and down the East coast, I guess, coming up here the next couple of months. I'm doing, um, fan expo, Philadelphia tomorrow night. I'm doing Phoenixville, Pennsylvania at the blob, the theater where they shot the blob in, in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania on Saturday night. And then, um, yeah, back to Philly. I'm going to be in Altoona, Pennsylvania for the sci-fi Valley con. I don't know. I got booked for that. I, I hadn't even announced I'm doing a <laughs> UFO movie. Maybe the, the aliens are ahead of the game. Um, and then I'm doing, yeah, just a bunch of shows um, throughout the rest of this year on and off um, between the room and also promoting Forbidden Sky and then showing my horror film, Miracle Valley. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you were actually in Harrisburg uh, a few months ago at the, right. uh, what is it, at the cinema? The Midtown Cinema. Midtown, yeah, Midtown. Cinema, uh, and which is only like 20 minutes from us. Yeah. Uh, I was just happy to be. Harrisburg. Yeah, I was out of, out of town and I missed it. I was pretty sad about that. So well, I'm going to be doing a show at the Mahoning Drive-In on June 11th. Okay. okay. Not too far from there. It's a really cool, it's one of the coolest drive-ins in the country. And we're doing, showing the room on 35 millimeter, um, which will be, which will be crazy. So um, if you're not around for that one, that'd be great. If not, I'm sure I'll come find you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I'll, I'll around wherever, wherever you're at. Now with the the one at the drive-in, um, are you gonna do a Q and A also? Q and A, yep. Yeah, which is beamed up. We shoot it on camera, and it's beamed up on the big screen, and it's all so the audio is in all the cars as well. Oh, awesome, okay, cool. Um, now uh, getting back to aliens, uh, you mentioned that you know, travel around the country. Uh, you know the paranormal. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? I have. So I haven't. I lived in this house. It was built in 1885 in South Pasadena, California. It looked very cool, very uh, an old Victorian style. It was built near the railroad, which was now a metro, metro, uh, small metro line. Moved in there. I was really excited with my girlfriend at the time. Um, and I had to go to Sweden for work. And so she moved in. It was supposed to be a really happy time. And she's like, there's something wrong with this place. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You wanted this place. 
I got it for you. Now what? It was just like, I couldn't win. Um, she's like, I hear scratching. I just feel there's something going on. So anyway, she was so scared of the place that she couldn't stay there without me. And I'm like, I got back. I come in. I expect the way she described it. I expected like ghosts to be dancing in, the, in this <laughs> house. I come back. I see nothing and things kind of die out for a little bit. And then like a month and a half later, it's around two 30 in the morning and I'm out and she's shaking me. And she's like, did you hear that? Wake up, wake up. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's flipping out. I'm like, what? She's like, there's somebody laughing in the basement. Oh God. And I'm like, what? She's like, listen, listen. He just started laughing. And I was like, what? And it was so creepy the way she said it, it had to be real because she, she heard it. Um, and so she was just so convinced there was something really wrong with this place. So we called out a paranormal um, professional to come out at night and they did a whole thing. And um, they were communicating with the ghost. This is like one o'clock in the morning. And they're like, there's a presence here and we're, we're, we're speaking to it. And they were saying that the spirit was telling them that it was disturbed because we had gotten a new kitten. So it was disturbed by the kitten. And that's why it was laughing. It was like interacting. There was too much noise. And I was like, that's really creepy. <laughs> um, so they came up with more things that were really disturbing. Um, I think some time had passed and it's sort of, then there was a cigarette smell in the laundry room. None of us smoke. It was clear cigarette smell, which is another sign of a haunting apparently. Then it sort of died out. We forgot about it. And then October came around again the next year. And the same crap started happening again. She kept saying she's sensing things. She's feeling things. Our cat got really sick. Mm. And the vets could not understand what was wrong with it. They, they had no idea. We did all these tests. It had a fever that would not go away. It was really bizarre. And she had this paranormal app that could get sounds and have them be transcribed. And she said one of them came through and one of the voices said, is your cat dead? And I'm like, this, this is creepy, man. This is what next? Right. Um, so we ended up breaking up. Shocker. <laughs> I thought she was kind of off. Her mom thought maybe maybe she's got like she's a schizophrenic or something. I don't know. So we moved, we moved out, moved on. I ended up making this movie called Best Friends while we were living there, which was cool. And then um, a friend of mine, we were making the movie, and then the the filmmakers left to back to their city. And a buddy of mine came over who had been working on the film. And he brought his daughter, who was like two or three. And he walked in and he's like into the kitchen. And he's like, oh, where are the guys? I'm like, oh, they left last week. He's like, really? Because I could have sworn I just heard voices. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and then it hit me. He had a little infant. So whenever there seemed to be youth, there was a response. There was voices. There was interaction. Hmm. Then I always felt a little awkward at night. It was very, very like it was a bigger house. And just at night, I'd feel kind of weird. I don't know. Each year with little things, maybe it was in my mind, but it wasn't until my mom came to visit. Who's big into paranormal. Uh, she was sleeping on the couch and she heard the back door rattling like nonstop. And she said, at first she thought my, my ex-girlfriend was crazy, but then she's like, there's definitely something here. And then was I, so I decided we finished the movie. I was moving out and the old neighbor, I walked around back, told me, did you know that place is haunted? Oh God. She said, she was an older woman. I'm like, what? She's like, oh yeah. Things would go missing all the time. It became a joke. <laughs> so the house was built in 1885 and it was just one of those things that was so eerie that I went from going, okay, she's, she's clearly off to there's really something there. And it was really terrifying. The laughter in the basement is something that stayed with me to this day. Wow. Because how do you explain that? There's yeah, no I don't know. <laughs> got to be some energy there that has been, um, and to, you know, to really, to, to how to describe that. Do you think that would ever, mm. uh, inspire, uh, you know, a script or anything you might put into a movie. Yeah. We're I actually, it's been a, a little bit of that is in forbidden sky and the UFO movie okay. Okay. That I went cool. through because there's just moments of that creepiness that I'm trying to recreate. Awesome. So, okay. You believe in uh, ghosts. 
Uh, I assume you believe in aliens. Yeah, the movie kind of goes into a little bit of both sides um, okay. about with the with the character's journey. So there's so much out there. I've, I've listened to so many different studies and podcasts, and and from every every end you could think of. Um, and it feels like the more I know, the more I'm confused. So, <laughs> It's pretty fascinating. That's what keeps it, you know, keeps it all so interesting. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Bigfoot? I was up in Eureka. I was up in Bigfoot country in January. And um, the way we're designing the character's trailer in Forbidden Sky is he has all those I want to believe Bigfoot hunters and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I was up in the thick of it. I mean, every gas station would pull off to his photos and Bigfoot and everything. <laughs> and uh, I think there's something really interesting there. I, it, again, it could be that a lot of pot smokers up there, they were out, they saw something go down and they were like totally freaked out. Um, so I love, I love the idea of the unknown. And I think it's just something that it's always cool to keep an open mind and keep exploring. And um, cause it's, it's sort of boring if there's nothing, you know, it's always cool to be on the lookout for something. Yeah. Uh, totally agree. That's why yeah. we do the show. <laughs> uh now, uh, I know you're a busy man. You got a lot to do, but, uh, you know, if you don't mind indulging me as a fan of the room, uh, is there any like crazy story or anything that just went down on set that would, you know, be funny for all the fans to hear? Well, the story I always kind of stick to is, I mean, the making of the room is every day was a surprise as you can tell mm -hmm. from saying, but one of the ones I really love, it was sort of late, late in the shoot. Everyone was like, sort of, you know, burnt out and, and Tommy was lying on the floor inside the, the camera equipment rental shop. And he's like, yeah, I have to do it. And I was like, what now? He's like, I have to show my ass to sell this movie. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, Oh, cause we're shooting the sex scenes. I was like, do you think I should do it? James Dean would do it. I should do it. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, Tommy go for it. And I was thinking like, maybe he'd contemplate or how he would do it, but he literally went back out we were going to film the bed scenes and he had the sheet cover him. He had a sock on his, uh, this thing. And then he literally walked out totally naked, went for it. And the entire crew was like, <laughs> Whoa, like no warning. It was, it was really, it was incredible. And just that I'd seen a lot to that point, but that moment I just, I burst into laughter in a way that I was like, this is, this is amazing. I got to be sort of the first fan of, of the craziness of the room. Well, I hope I get to uh, catch it live uh, yep. and get to catch one of your Q&As about it. And I'm very excited to be able to throw some spoons, I guess. <laughs> right. Uh, it's it really seeing the movie in a theater with a crowd. It's a, such a different experience. Like when I was in Harrisburg, I did a little bit of live commentary. So I talk a little bit through the film. Oh. And that audience is just so clever. And the stuff they come up with, uh, the energy in there is just, it's unlike anything, any other movie experience. And uh, this weekend you're in, uh, down in Philly for the uh, Fan Expo. Yep. And we, uh, we go there every year, except we have another event to go to this weekend. Right. And so I won't be able to <laughs> see you then. Uh, we were there last year and did a live performance, but not this year. So yeah. that's another bummer. Right. But this is still great to be able to talk to you via technology. Uh, I'm excited to back your Kickstarter. And when do you think the film um, you know, be ready for everybody to to see and watch we're gonna be starting filming early next year. We're going to be filming a few different locations. And like I said, we're giving a chance for any movie goer or any aspiring actor, or aspiring producer, a chance for them to be a part of the film with different tiers. Um, we're going to try to film in Iceland if we can, Ooh. but the movie's set in Roswell, New Mexico. Um, and we're also doing like a Blu-ray. We're doing a digital screener um, and just a lot of, yeah, a lot of cool things. And again, this is sort of a celebration of independent filmmaking for, Anybody who wants to be a part of it, I think, is, is the, the goal with this project is to make a really fun UFO movie. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, tell everybody where they can uh, go find this and learn more. And back. So, oh, I'm uh, on social media. I'm at Greg Sestero. I just joined uh, TikTok. It was something I never thought I would do. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's at Greg Sestero, Greg Sestero official, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> um, and uh, ForbiddenSky.com is the Kickstarter link. If uh, you go on Kickstarter, it's there. It's Forbidden Sky. Um, and yeah, if you're, you know, anybody who's interested, um, if you're ever interested in UFOs, we'd love to have your support. Um, and the goal is, again, to go out and make something that we can all watch together. And, um, you know, 
I don't know about throwing spoons at the screen, <laughs> but uh, we'll figure something out. Maybe uh, small little spaceships or something. Heck yeah. uh, nice, nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, you know it's been a really cool journey, and um, you know the passion really is at this point is telling stories and making fun movies. Perfect. That's what I want to do. Right. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time to tell us all about uh, the movie, some of the funny things you've uh, experienced in your life, and the, some of the creepy things you experienced right. in your life. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Greg, thank you so much, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Anytime. Thanks so much for, for supporting everything, and I'm sure we'll see each other in person really soon, and hopefully that ghost doesn't come back to haunt me. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Take care, Greg. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it.